it takes time because we it took time for all those faults in our mind, our tendencies to build up. So it will take time to unfold them as well. But that's the only way to go. Mind transformation. That is the very meaning of meditation. It means familiarization with a new way of being, new way of perceiving things, which is more in adequation with reality, with interdependence, with the stream and continuous transformation which our being and our consciousness is. So the interface with cognitive science, since we need to come to that, and what was the subject of, we have to deal in such a short time, with brain plasticity. Brain was thought to be more or less fixed. All the neuronal connection in numbers and quantities were thought, till, till the last 20 years, thought to be more or less fixed when we reached the adult age. Now recently it has been found that it can change a lot. A violinist, as we heard, we have done 10,000 hours of violin practice, some area that controls the movements of fingers in the brain, change a lot, increase and reinforcement of the synaptic connections. So can we do that with human qualities, with loving kindness, with patience, with openness? So that's what those great meditators have been doing. Some of them who came to the labs, like in Madison, Wisconsin, or in Berkeley, did 20 to 40,000 hours of meditation. They do like three years retreat where they do meditate 12 hours a day and then the rest of their life they would do that three, four hours a day. They are real Olympic champions of mind training. <laughs> this is the place where they meditate. You can see it's kind of inspiring. Now, here are with 256 electrodes. <laughs> So what did they find? Of course, same thing, the scientific embargo. <laughs> a paper has been submitted to nature, hopefully it will be accepted. It deals with the state of compassion, unconditional compassion. We ask meditators who have been doing that for years and years and years to put their mind in a state where there's nothing but loving kindness, total availability to sentient being. Of course, during the training, we do that with object. We think of people suffering, we think of people we love, but at some point, it can be a state which is all pervading. Here's a preliminary result, which I can show because it's already been shown. The bell curve shows uh, 150 controls. And the, the, what is being looked at is the difference between the right and the left frontal lobe. In very short, people who have more activity on the right side of the, of the prefrontal cortex are more depressed, withdrawn, they don't describe a lot of positive effect. It's the opposite on the left side, more tendency to altruism, to happiness, to express and curiosity and so forth. So there's a basic line for people and also it can be change. If you see a comic movie, you go more to the left side. If you, if you are happy about something, you go more to the left side. If you have a bout of depression, you go to the right side. Here, the minus 0.5 is a four standard deviation of a meditator who meditates on compassion. It's something that is totally out of the bell curve. So I have no time to go into all the different scientific results. Hopefully they will come. But they found that this is after three and a half hours in a, in a, a fMRI. It's like, it's like coming out of a space uh, ship. Also, it has been shown in other labs, for instance, Paul Ekman's labs in, in, in Berkeley, that there, some meditators are able also to control the emotional response more than it could be taught. Like the startle experiments, for instance. If you sit a guy on a chair with all this kind of apparatus measuring your physiology, and there's kind of a bomb that goes off. It's a so in instinctive response that in 20 years, they never saw anyone who, who would not jump. Some are some meditators without trying to stop it, but simply by being completely open, thinking that that bang is just going to be just a small event, like a shooting star, they're able not to move at all. So the whole point of that is not sort of to make like a, a circus uh, thing of showing exceptional beings who can jump or whatever. It's more to say that mind training matters. That this is not just a, a luxury. This is not a supplementary vitamin for the soul. This is something that's going to determine the quality of every instant of our life. 
We are ready to spend 50 years achieving education. We love to do jogging, fitness. We do all kinds of things to remain beautiful. Yet, we spend surprisingly little time taking care of what matters most, the way our mind functions, which again is the ultimate thing that determines the quality of our experience. Now, compassion should also be put in action. That's what we try to do in different places. Just this one example is worth a lot of work. This lady with bone TV left alone in the tent was going to die with her only daughter. One year later, how she is. Different schools and clinic we've been doing in Tibet. And just I leave you with the beauty of those looks that tells more about happiness than I could ever say. <laughs> and jumping monks of Tibet. <laughs> Flying monks. Thank you very much. <laughs>